I'm going to go ahead and before I put this weight in this leg, I'm going to go ahead and turn it slightly. Now, I'm going to turn this leg. Right. I step across the front. The weight kind of got loaded here, right? I'm going to pivot on this foot, and then as the weight transfers, I'm going to change it to here. I step behind, and right now, I can turn really either foot, right? Like the weight's here, so I kind of turn this one. I can turn this one, and turn this one again. Maybe too much for most people. But look, I can put the weight here, turn the foot, turn the foot. Step across. I'm going to turn that way, right? So, we'll say the foot's here, and I'm going to go ahead and start to turn this foot and turn this one. Now, if it's, most of the time when somebody steps behind or across the front, it's because they want to go that way. It's good to be able to turn around. So, look, so when I step, one, two, you want to practice this. One, the weight's here, I pull this foot across. Put the weight here, right? Foot goes across, the weight is here, I wait, I'm pitching the weight, I stabilize me, and then I step again. Now, if it's just that I want to, you know, I want to pick this thing up and you know, I'm doing whatever and I step. If you look, I, if I can keep this enough width between my legs so that my hip doesn't lock, and look, I sink. I don't listen and reach, of course I'm going to lose some of my stability, right? So, same thing again, step across and pull the foot out. You can do it backward, I mean, you can just re reposition too, right? I can step across, right? And then look, the weight is, let's say it's neutral, or, but we'll say more in this foot. So look, I'm going to put the weight back here, and I'll step back. Step across. Step back, step across, step over here, step back, step across, All right, put the weight back here, step back, step across, the weight kind of sinks here, I put it back here, and I step back. So, and then the turning around. So, we just kind of review it one more time. You've got, and I mentioned the, the tripping over stuff, right? If when you're doing the walking, Right, the forward and back. But in the beginning, if you can just pick the foot up enough that you can strike heel to toe and, and try to engage the hips and drive. Okay? Right? Get it backwards, weights here, and I go toe, heel. But look again, I've got this lift here, right? So my hip is moves freely. Toe heel. We can add to that. We're going to add a knee raise. Now, if you look at the exercises, there are several exercises that, that mimic these actions. One of them is holding on to something and raising the knees. Okay? We want to strengthen these hip flexors so for all the leg. But from here, take your time. And if this is as far as you can pick it up at first, that's great. You can even pause slightly and then set it down. Okay? Pick it up all slightly and set it down. But we can try to challenge ourselves and at least get the thigh parallel with the ground. Like and then set it down. And don't co plop the foot, meaning like this. Some people do this and then they'll go. <clears throat> and we don't want to do that. We want to control that, that weight and that forward momentum, right? So pick it up, set it down. Transfer the weight. I do it again. I pick it up. I sit it down. Now I transfer the weight. The same thing going backwards. I shift the weight. I pick the leg up. I set it down. Toe, heel, shift the weight. Pull this leg up. Toe, heel, shift the weight. Okay. So, if you look at all of those different little aspects, you, you can also do this if, uh, for the, the stepping over something. You can, you know, uh, those things that, that go across the door for drafts in the winter, um, those things are something you can use. Or, uh, 
Uh, anything where you can set something down and you're making yourself have to step over it um, is helpful. But again, if you uh, do the footwork and you do the exercises, you're going to build yourself a good base to start with. Okay? And that good base is going to help you if you want to develop a Tai Chi practice or you know, you want to be able to be more mobile and be able to maintain their independence. Um, and you will be able to do other activities, right? So if we review them one more time, um, and you can add in the stationary leg list, but, but uh, th those are other videos too. But again, I want to be able to walk, and I don't want to just walk like this, right? I want to make sure I'm getting my, my heel in front of my other toe, right? Number one, and then two, I want to really engage. So I can, I really want to think about using those muscles, right? I, I, I don't want to think about trying to, uh, uh, I'm going to say that, cheat myself, right? I, I want to work hard at making these muscles work. I want to think it through. Now look, I'm going to turn around, right? So the weight is here. I turn this foot, I turn this foot. And this foot's going to be on the wrong side, so I step behind this toe behind this heel, twice here, and turn me, right? And then look, we'll do a set with lifting the knee. I raise the knee, I put the heel down, the toe, and then I transfer the weight. I take some of it off, so I can turn the foot slightly. I pick it up, I set it down, and then I gradually shift the weight. Same thing going backwards, right? Shift, raise. Step. All right, so we have that. The turning around is a separate action, but you say you're here, and you can do this two ways. I'm going to take one step back so that my toe is behind my heel. The weight's still here. I turn and I turn. I turn, turn back, I step up. It's mechanical, yes, but. It's ensuring that you're working those joints, that you're working those muscles, and you're processing it in your mind. The weight is here. As I transfer the weight, I turn the foot. Right? Step back up. Do a set of five, ten, whatever it is that you want to do. But, uh, now, there's also doing it this way. Again, I've got this foot. And I want to turn that way. So, weight's neutral. I'm going to kind of transfer it over to this leg. Try not to turn with weight on your leg. If I'm like this and I've got weight here and you try to turn your foot, it's going to put too much pressure on your knee and quite possibly it's going to make you more unstable, right? It's not, it's not like you're, you're doing this, right? You know, just, but just shift the weight over. Feel it in the bottom of the foot. I turn the foot and then as I go to transfer the weight into this leg, I'm going to lift this foot off. I transfer the weight back. I turn the foot. And then the weight's here, I turn the foot, and then I turn. So you can practice it both ways. Then there's the turning around. You know, clockwise or counterclockwise. So I'm going to do clockwise, so I'll go counterclockwise. So I'm here, I step, all the weight's here, I turn the foot, the weight's here, but I'm going to transfer it here, and as the weight's coming off, I'm going to turn this foot. Okay? I put the weight back here. I step back, remember toe behind heel, the weight is here, I turn this foot, now I'm going to turn this home. The weight is here, right? I'm going to shift it to here. I step back, toe behind heel, I turn the leg, I turn it. Okay? Then we have stepping across, right? So it's the front or the back, which is really common for people to do. You know, maybe not consciously, but we probably we do it more often than we than we, than we think. So, but look, I'm going to do it like this one more time. Remember, try not to do this. When you turn your feet back, you want to make sure that it's you've got the room in there. Some people even do this when they go to turn; they won't even pull the foot in. And it, in a way, I think they do that because. They feel like that keeps them from falling out, but it makes me like I'm a inverted triangle, right? Don't want to be like that. 
So it's better again. Don't put weight on the, you know, have most of the foot on this, the weight on this side when I turn. Right? When I turn. So the stepping across, I step across, and then look. You can say, you know, your weight is predominantly here or neutral, but then I'm going to put most of it back on the back leg and put my foot back across. I'm going to do it the other way. I step across. I don't know, I just let my weight sink. And then I'm going to put it on the other leg and pull the leg back across. I do it from behind. I step across. Right? And then look, I'm going to make sure I put most of the weight back in this leg so I can pull this leg through. Across. I put the weight back here. Okay? And then if we turn around with it, which is uh, quite challenging, uh, you might want to use a wall or something that you can support yourself with, especially if you already have someone go forward lean or you feel like you're going to do this and do this, or at least do it somewhere where if you did fall down from doing it, that you're not going to hit some object and hurt yourself. Uh, I'm not trying to freak anybody out about that, but it, you, you, you know, have somebody there that, like, sometimes when I'm teaching people in the classes, I put my hand on their shoulder, just lightly, I don't really push into them, so that they can practice the turning around. Uh, but step, and again, if I leave the width of, between my legs, I can keep that mobility here, and then I turn. Right? I step across, I turn. I step across, I turn me. I step behind, I turn me. Step, turn me. Step across, turn me. Step across, turn me. Step across, turn me. The, the way that I have here. What's going to catch you, like I said again, you're doing that so much, you know, subconsciously. So look, if I do something like this, it's just like the lady that was walking with the sensor gate like this, and her weight is going like this with every step. I, I, I feel uncomfortable to get people cards sometimes, especially something like that. But I should have given that lady a card, I mean, she might have got mad at me or whatever, but point being, she needs to do something before she ends up injuring herself. And then other people, like I said, that I see, you know, I, I look at those things when I go to stores. It's just uh, you know, it's part of my job, and you know, especially something that really stands out. And the same thing with these people that drag their feet or swing the foot. Don't want to do that. You want to get that knee up. It's not really the foot. I can kick it, like in the martial application of what I do. Uh, say you, you, want, you want to keep somebody from sweeping their leg, right? They use their foot to sweep their leg out from you. Invariably, uh, if you try to pick the foot up, you know, I'm just giving you some odd, you know, some random percentages here. Uh, you're, you're probably going to, the majority of the time, you're still going to be able to sweep your, your leg from under you. Uh, if I pick, think of the knee, and I think pick the knee up, it's for whatever reason, it's faster. Even the same response time, it's it's faster to pick it up if I think about the foot. The other thing about picking up the foot is it usually kind of rolls the person backwards, especially if they don't have good flexibility in here. But it's getting that up, right? And back to walking. You can even do it this way. Look, I'm not really trying to engage the hip as much, but I'm still working those hip flexor muscles to pick that leg up. Um, anyway, I, um, I, I know all over the place in this video, but if you think about doing those footwork exercises and you're doing Tai Chi or doing Tai Chi with me, it's going to improve your Tai Chi. If you're purely doing this more because it's mobility and stability, posture balance, all of that stuff and strength, then this is very beneficial to you, even if you don't do Tai Chi. Um, the exercises I'm talking about, they're very, very useful. Um, there's a, you know, a, just real briefly, and then I'm going to make a video later this week uh, over what uh, combine all the exercises together. But the chair squats, 
knee lifts, uh, think like this, holding yourself up, okay, holding yourself up, and wall push-ups, those are four really good exercises that anybody can do in their home. The, this pulling action is good for my, my back, my lats especially, and my, my biceps. The wall pushing is good for my, my chest and my, the back of my arms, right? The knee lifting is for the, the, the muscles within the hips and in the, the legs. Um, the squats there are good for the muscles in the legs, but especially for the buttocks. Without strong buttocks, it's very hard to stand up from a chip. Also, too, is the mechanics of it. One of the things you can do right away, especially if you haven't done a lot of stuff, is like cross your hands over like this and look, keep your back flat and then come forward. And this will help to, to loosen up the muscles and the fascia and the connective or the other connective tissue, like the ligaments and tendons, in my back and in my hips, and the inside of my hips. This way, right? And I'm trying to push my, my head out past my toes, but then I'm trying to keep my back flat. Back and forth like this. Really good to loosen you up. So, anyway, I hope the full work is helpful. And I know this is a long video, but I, I truly believe that this stuff is, if you prove it, it's not just the preventative of falling down. That shouldn't be the, the the only thing. It should be that I want to improve my underlying physical health, my mobility, my strength, my, my posture, my ability to be active and be able to do the things I want to do. And again, if you're doing this and you're 30 and you're doing Tai Chi, um, it, it's the same thing. I, I, I need that width between my legs. I don't want to do the moves, even like these long stances. I don't want to be like this. I become too narrow, and then it's, it's much harder to maintain my stability. We even do exercises in the Chongqing Tai Chi, the 13 Taiwan, where there's a couple of them where we actually put everything on one line like this, and this is to stress the stabilizer muscles and connective tissue in my body to kind of enhance that awareness of my stability, and at the same time, it helps to strengthen it. Um, but, um, but that is, that's an intended purpose. I'm doing a bow stance though. I really want this toe to heal like this so that I can use my hip. And it doesn't matter if I'm using a narrow stance, like most people, if you're watching this video and you're watching it for the purpose, which is the stability to keep you falling, you're probably going to do something like this about the width of your hips and shoulders. Um, now, We'll, we'll say this is a small frame. Now, if I do one and a half of these squares, this is a more of a medium frame. And if I do a large frame, it's at least two of these. Each time I keep increasing, um, we'll say the, the width and the length. But look, here I can still have the mobility in my hips, even though the, the, the frame is smaller. That's fine. It's, it's not. It's not the width of the feet a lot of times. Now, if you're using a half step like this to move, you want to fix that. You want to get that foot up. Because even using that half step is going to, if you're having to do this when you're walking, it would be very difficult for you to be able to pick the foot up. Right? Most of the time, the person is just kind of sliding it out. And we don't want anybody to be like that. You know, we want to help them. And, and, and that didn't happen overnight, right? It took a long time for them to keep having to modify their, their, their gait and all of that to be able to walk. You know, just the person got older, maybe they got sick or something happened. But we still should be able to recover to this point if we can. Okay? That toe to heel, see? The heel flip like that. And then as wide as my hips. In the length, right? If you 
do that right there, right off the bat, and try to work with it. And again, don't block any of this out. Think of your muscles if you can. I know it's hard. I have people who come to me in their 70s, and just to get the idea of this engagement again is, is difficult. But I think part of that too has to do with the, the fascia, and you, you need to stretch them. You need to be able to do range of motion stuff to loosen it back up because it gets tight spots in it. Um, if the muscles are weak, or we'll say the ligaments or the tendons have gotten, we'll say, restricted. And again, all of that stuff twines together. So, anyway, I hope you liked the video and um, I hope it has some value to you. Thank you for watching.